Hey everybody, welcome into class. I just wanted to um, you just say welcome and, and hope you enjoy uh, this class, Algebra 2, little, uh, basically the same thing as Algebra 1, only just a little bit harder, a little bit more challenging material. Now here's the nice thing about Algebra 2. Actually, more students pass Algebra 2 than passed Algebra 1. And that is because, yes, the material is getting a little bit more challenging, but you already know algebra. You already have the base of algebra to stand on. And so, yes, the, the material is going to get a little bit harder, a little bit more challenging. However, you can handle it. You can do it. So just work hard this year, do your best, and, uh, and we'll get through this together. Okay? All right, uh, I just wanted to say something kind of with the videos before we get started. I have found um, that we just in order not to have any copyright problems where the publisher of the book could um, look at this and say, well, you're putting our material out there and people didn't buy the books. Uh, I know that most of my class bought the books, but I'm not going to be showing the screenshots, uh, excuse me, of the, the book um, on the screen. So I want you to always have your book there with you. If you're just watching these videos, uh, you're not, you don't go to my school or something, uh, we're using the Abeka book curriculum. So you can go out and buy an Abeka book, uh, Algebra 2, and then you can follow along uh, with me there. All right, so if you have your books, go ahead and open to page number two, page number two. Um, lesson one, chapter one, Introduction to Algebra 2. Here's what we're doing today. We're just going to kind of do a recap of Algebra 1. We're just, um, and, and one thing you're going to notice about Algebra 2 is it goes so much faster than Algebra 1. And the reason it goes faster than Algebra 1 is because they already assume that you know everything that you're supposed to know. If you know everything that you're supposed to know from Algebra 1, you won't have any problem keeping up. If you still have uh, difficulties with basic algebra, uh, you're going to struggle because it's going to go fast. So you better uh, review, you better go back and look at the things, uh, refresh yourself on the basic algebra concepts so that you can keep up with the pace of, of this book because it is fast paced. Okay? All right, algebra two. Here's, what we're, here's where we're going to start. We are going to start with uh, the order of operations. And so anybody that's had my class before knows that I always call it, I call it the O of O, the order of operations. And I usually draw like a little, you know, face. I like the order of operations. So order of operations, here's what it means if, if you're new. Order of operations means you have to do things in a specific order in order to get the correct answer. You have to do this step first, then this step second, then this step third. If you, if you change the order, you'll come out with a wrong answer. So we need to uh, pay attention and make sure that we know what the order of operation is. Number one, we always do parentheses first. parentheses first. Also in the parentheses step, remember we learned last year that there's different things. So obviously parentheses, and then you have brackets, and then you have braces. I don't know how to do these things, so I just make them look ugly, and people go like, yeah, I think I know what he's trying to do there. Uh, but I'm not an art teacher, okay? I don't know how to do those. Um, so, And then we have what's called the fraction bar. I'll write that frac. Whoops, whoops. Let's, uh, there we go. Okay, it's not cooperating with me today. I don't know why. All right, there we go. The fraction bar. Now the fraction bar is, here's what I mean by that. You're going to solve everything on the top of the fraction bar and then you're gonna solve everything on the bottom of the fraction bar. I don't mean you actually do the division because fraction means division. That comes later, but you're going to solve the top and then solve the bottom. That's what I'm talking about there is with the fraction bar, okay? All right, step number two is when we do the exponents. The exponents, and you should remember what those are. Step number three is when we do multiplication or division from left 
to right. Multiplication or division, whichever one comes first. Remember, we, we can go in either order. Um, sometimes we're going to do the division first because it comes first. Sometimes we're going to do the multiplication first because it comes first. And then that leaves us with step number four. We're going to do the addition or the subtraction again from left to right. All right, so that's your order of operation, and that's a, that's a key. I mean, if, if you, you probably didn't get through Algebra 1, you probably didn't pass it if you didn't know that. So you're here in Algebra 2, hopefully because you know that. If you don't, make sure that you go back and you review that. Um, okay, what else do we need? <clears throat> you want to do one of those? I'll do an example. I'll do an example. Um, five times parenthesis 3 plus 4 squared minus 3 cubed over 11 minus 2. All right, this is a fairly complicated problem right here. Now, remember, I told you that fraction bars are part of the first one, the parentheses. So in other words, we're going to want to solve this, and then we're going to want to solve this before we can really move on with the rest of the problem. So um, let's go ahead and solve the, we can solve the bottom part really easy. So let's go ahead and solve the bottom part. 11 minus 2 equals, okay, 9. So 9 is going to be our denominator all the way through it. So um, let's just go ahead and we'll rewrite this. 5 times 3 plus 4 times 2 minus 3 cubed over 9. Okay, So we just solved that one part. Now what I would do is I would go to the top and I'd start solving the top. And um, so you see right here, you see some parentheses. So that's where I'd start. What I like to do is not get confused by trying to do everything in, in out of order and trying to do everything in one step. I just rewrite everything except for the step I'm doing. So 5 times and then I just do this. What's 3 plus 4? 7, and that is squared, so you can keep it in a parenthesis if you want, or you don't have to keep it in parentheses or anything like that, minus 3 cubed, and that's still all over 9. We're going to continue to have it over 9, okay? And then we would do, um, next is exponents, so if we're going back up to the order of operation, after we do parentheses, we do the exponents. And so we would come up here and we would say, okay, I've got two exponents. I've got one here and I've got one here. You can do them in the same step. It's fine. Five times seven times seven, 49, minus three times three times three. Remember, that's three cubed. Three times three times three. That's what three cubed means. So three times three is nine. Nine times three is 27. And that's still all over nine. Okay, so we got the exponent part done. So we're going to come back up here and we're going to do step number three. Multiply or divide left to right. Multiply or divide from left to right. And so we see we have a multiplication problem right there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to get 245 minus 27 over 9. All right, and so then we would just go ahead and do that next step and just do that um, subtraction. And I think that gives us like 218 over 9. 218 over 9. Um, believe it or not, that is the correct answer right there. It's finished. Um, now, why is that finished? Because in algebra, we can leave it as an improper fraction. That's fine. In fact, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for improper fractions. What I would do is I would try, just take my calculator and try that real quick and say, okay, does, can I simplify that out? The answer is no. It doesn't simplify out. If you wrote 24 and 2 ninths, I don't really like that answer for algebra, to be honest with you. That's, you don't have to put it into a mixed number. I would rather have the improper fraction, okay? So there you go. Next. 
we are going to look at the algebraic properties, the algebraic properties. Um, one thing about this book is this book sometimes leaves a whole bunch of stuff in one lesson. And so we're going to chop the lessons up. Sometimes I'll do two different videos for one lesson, things like that. So I'm not going to get through this whole lesson in one video. So I'm going to get through these properties and then we'll, we'll go on to something else. So if you're in your book, you've, got, uh, you've turned your page and you should be now be on page three, so algebraic properties. The first algebraic property is the commutative. Um, some people call it the communi communitative or something. I don't know, I've heard people say it different weird ways. No, it's commutative, okay? Commutative is the way that you say that. Now, the commutative property means this. I can switch things around without changing the value. So I could change A plus B to B plus A. I don't change the value. I could change A times B to B times A. Don't change it. Now you gotta remember, in uh, division and in subtraction, commutative property does not work. But in addition and multiplication, you can switch them around and it doesn't change anything. Okay. The next one that we're going to look at is the associative. The associative property. All right. So with the associative property, um, what happens is you can associate groups together. You can regroup things, in other words. Um, so if you had A plus B plus C, that is the same as saying A plus B in a group plus C. Or it's the same as saying A plus B plus C in a group. It's the same thing. You can group things in addition. You can also group things in multiplication if you have A, B, C. So you could have A, B in a group and C. Or you could have A and B, C in a group. You can regroup them and it doesn't change. Okay, And that's in your book there. You can look, look at that. Okay, that's the associative uh, principle. The next principle that we'll talk about is the distributive. And again, you probably did not get through um, basic algebra. You probably didn't get through algebra one if you did not know the distributive property. Distributive property means you give one to everybody. Everybody gets one, okay? It's like Oprah. Everybody gets, you get a car and you get a car. And you, if you don't know what Oprah is, okay, that's fine. She gives a car to everybody, okay? And so in this, we're going to give an A to everybody. So if we have A times B plus C, we're going to give an A to everybody, okay? We're going to distribute it throughout the, the thing. So AB plus AC. Everybody gets a C. Everybody gets an A, okay? Uh, don't you wish that was like Algebra 2? Everybody gets an A. No, I do not use the distributive property in Algebra 2. Trust me, okay? You got to earn your A if you want an A. All right, the next one is the identity. Identity. The identity property. Here's what that means. Um, I can always add zero to anything, and I get the same thing. A plus zero equals A. You know, yeah, that's it. Okay. I wish I could make it harder, but that's it. You can always add zero, and you still get the identity. You still get the same thing. You can always multiply by one. One times, sorry, one times A. equals A. You can always multiply by 1 and get identity. You can always add 0 and get identity. Okay, And then the last one that we'll talk about real quick here is the inverse. The inverse. Alright. So inverse. And in the inverse property, basically the idea is that you can flip or you can always add the negative to it to get zero. So if I had a positive A and I added a negative A, I would get zero. So if I add the inverse sign, I always get zero. The other way that we use inverse is by flipping a fraction. So this is also an inverse. Um, one over A 
and a over 1. That's an inverted fraction. That's a flipped fraction. Okay? And so if we multiply here, we always get 1. And you say, okay, I don't believe you. Okay, well, let's do it. If we have 1 times a, we get a. And if we have a times 1, we get a. Well, a over a always equals 1. Anything over itself always equals 1. So a over a equals 1. Because a divided by a, they both cancel, they give you 1. So um, that's inverse. When you invert something, you flip something in fractions. Okay? Um, well, that's, that's half of the lesson uh, for lesson one, and I'll go ahead and teach uh, in a second video the second half of lesson one. Okay? All right. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.